the only Zach. If you hear the word Zach, that's you. Alright, did you bring that camera Good evening, I'm Benjamin Cullen. And I'm Noelle Trost. Here we are live from Open House. It is the freshman orientation. Yes, well, this is the 51st uh, annual open house at Beverly High, and at this orientation, we're expecting to see middle schoolers coming to become more familiarized with um, programs that are happening at the high school and seeing if it's a good fit for them. There's always a lot of excitement around this time. Eighth years are going through this huge change They're in a completely new environment. I'm excited to um, give everyone a taste of what tonight is all about at Open House. I'm sure KBEB is going to be covering the entire thing. Absolutely.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Beverly Hills High School. Uh, we're really happy to have you. Um, we've been kind of adapting our open house for a few years now. We've made it a showcase. And more and more, we've got incoming eighth grade, or incoming ninth graders who are currently in eighth grade coming in and checking out our school. This is the first year we moved it up to January. And one of the big reasons we did it is um, you're choosing electives right now. Right? You're at your schools, you're choosing electives, and when we used to do it in like late March or early April, your electives were already, already decided. One of the things you're going to have an opportunity to do tonight is go around and talk to people, uh, teachers, maybe some students, about their experiences here. And you might say, hey, you know, this is something I'd like to do, and you have time to kind of adjust your elective choice if you wanted to. Most of your choices are already um, decided, you've worked with your counselors, we're going to talk about that briefly. But long story short, we want an opportunity to showcase Beverly Hills to as many incoming freshmen as possible. Now it's not just for you guys, it's also for the rest of the high school. We're hopeful you'll see high school kids, high school parents, so it is not just for you guys, but we have more and more said, hey, this is an opportunity to show off our school to the kids who are coming in, so we're really, really glad you're here. Um, we have an assortment of folks who will be helping me present. We have your, your counselors, your future counselors are over here. Uh, we have Greg Jackson and Janice Hart, let's give them a wave. Um, Thank you, and an applause, I like it. Um, we also have Casey Rowley, who's our college counselor. She's wonderful. Um, we also have Allie Norman Franks. She is our Norman Aid uh, crisis counselor. Um, she is wonderful as well. So all four of these are counselors. They all have different roles to support students. Um, two of those counselors, uh, Casey and Allie, Ms., uh, sorry, Ms. Norman Franks and Ms. Rowley, will be leaving us to go to the other three as well. Um, but. Uh, Ms. Hart and Mr. Jackson will be sticking with us. So welcome folks, we are glad you've arrived. Um, if it's not too much trouble, if you see seats in the middle, can we kind of squeeze it in to make some space on the sides? Because um, it is going to get cozy. Thank you guys, I appreciate you moving. Wow, great turnout, we're glad to have you all. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep going while you guys are moving. I appreciate that. So as you can see, we have uh, three assistant principals as well. Um, those assistant principals are in their respective houses. Uh, Mr. Stewart couldn't be here tonight, so I'm helping out. I'm the principal, Mark Mead, if you don't know me. And um, we, we love it here, and we're here to support you guys. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to our counselors. A lot of tonight is about classes and offerings and how things work. Um, we're going to try to present it to you as clearly as we can, show you what this night is about, show you what Beverly is about, and get you guys on your way. It should be fun, including a scavenger hunt that will be later on. Um, here we go. Have fun, folks. So welcome all of you guys to Beverly. We're very excited to have you guys here, and we hope that you guys are excited to be here. We are going to get to know you guys very well over the next four years because Ms. Hart and myself will be your counselor for all four years, which means that we will grow with you, we will uh, go through the years with you, we will go through your challenges and your successes with you, and we'll be here to support you through all of it. Uh, so it's very nice to meet you guys, and while we don't know you very well right now, four years from now, it'll be like we've known you guys for your whole lives. Um, so up on the board you can see that we do have a little bit of our letter breakdowns to show uh, who is with which counselor. As you can see, we are House B, and Ms. Hart is for students with letter, letters GJ through LEE. -E. I pick up with the LEF, and I go through the letter O. So anybody whose last name uh, is contained within that alpha will be a part of House B with myself, uh, Mrs. Hart, and Mr. Stewart as our assistant principal. Perfect. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Casey Rowley. I am your college counselor. So in addition to your counselor, you also have myself, and I plan overarching programs and events for students and parents. There's a ton of stuff for every grade level, and I also go into the classrooms and, and then plan larger events like the college fair and host over 120 colleges and universities uh, globally in our center. It's a really wonderful uh, space to take advantage of. I'm not gonna to take too much of your time. I will be in the College Center, which is on your map, which Ms. Norman Franks will point to the map when you guys head out. And you're more than welcome to stop by and check out the space. And if you have any questions, you can chat then. Okay. We're gonna have Ms. Rowley go to the next one. Thank you so much. You. And just so you know, uh, our college preparatory aspect of this high school is something <clears throat> that we're very, very proud of. What Ms. Rowley does is help you make individualized plans to succeed and get to the college of your dreams. 
So I'm Ms. Norman Franks. I'm the mental health counselor, so I focus on your social emotional learning. We do a lot of fun activities throughout the year called monthly aid activities where it's an opportunity for all students to participate. We do th fun things like stress less week, we bring in puppies. You'll see we have many opportunities for students to come in and meet with the counselors and, and get support. Um, throughout the entire year we have counseling where students can come in for ongoing counseling so they can actually meet with a therapist from the Maple Center every week or they could come in for short-term counseling. So maybe they're having test anxiety or they got in an argument with a friend and they just need to come in for a short period of time. We feel that it's really important for students to have that opportunity because if they're able to come in and talk to a trusted adult and have somebody help them through whatever challenge they're going through, then they can get back into the classroom and be successful in the classroom. So we hope that if you ever need anything that you can come into the Norman Aid. Today you'll get an opportunity to visit the Norman Aid Center. Um, on your way out, make sure you grab these maps. This is going to be a little fun activity where you're going to go around and explore the high school. Um, ASB students will give you a little sticker. And once you're finished exploring, you have to actually go to three electives that you're interested in, write down the name and the room number. Once you're finished with this, you'll come to the Norman Aid Center. And we have an awesome VHHS um, cell phone sticker, wallet sticker for you to, to grab. So you'll get a chance to see me in there. Um, we didn't put locations on here because we want you to get comfortable with the map. So you'll look at the map and you will, by the time you leave here today, you'll feel comfortable knowing your way around campus. All right, well thank you, I'll see you all soon. And one of the things you can do if you're kind of struggling with the map and you're not sure where you're going, look for some of our ASB and service learning kids. They're going to have balloons, right? So if you see a kid walking around with a helium balloon, tap them on the shoulder, let them know that you're needing some support, and they'll be glad to give it. So, by the way, we apologize for this. It's not cropping the way we would have thought. <laughs> yeah. So, you will be working with your current eighth grade teachers as you have been and your eighth grade counselor to get recommendations for courses that you'll be placed in for next year. So all of you will take an English class, you'll have a math class, um, most of you will have a foreign language class, you'll have a science class either biology or environmental science, you'll all have either PE or you'll be involved in a sport and then tonight is really about you being able to go out and, as Mr. Mead said, check out the wonderful electives that we have and find out what you're interested in. You should have received and turned into your eighth grade counselor a form that looks like this, where you had a chance to rank the electives. I'm seeing head nods, that's good, you turned this in. Guess what? If you find something tonight that you didn't know existed or you didn't know you were interested in or you've changed your mind, you can fill it out and you can turn it in tonight. We'll be in the College Center. So if you find something, if you, if you love your first choices, great, keep it. You don't have to turn in anyone. But if you decide you found something new or you'd like to reorder your ranking, go ahead and turn that in tonight and we will get these to the appropriate counselor. Um, some of you will be recommended for Honors World History um, as your elective um, and that you can also take an elective in addition to that, and when we get to our sample schedules, you'll kind of see how that works out with our bell schedule and our samples. Um, we we're kind of cutting off there. So this is kind of a representation of four different possibilities that students here might have. There are infinite possibilities. These are just samples. Not all algebra classes are taught period one. Not all English classes are taught, you know, period three. The only thing that's a for sure is that then if you're involved in a sport, that will be sixth period. Uh-oh. <laughs> we lost our schedule. It presents. And it's there. It's back. So the first two boxes kind of give you an example of classes that you'll be enrolled in. You can see, like I said, everybody's in an English. You're in some kind of science. You're in a math. You're in a PE or a sport. Um, and you're in an elective, and what, and what did I do about English, math, sci and science. Um, the bottom <coughs> left schedule kind of cut off there, but if you notice, it's a little bit bigger. That's a student who has been recommended for honors world history, and in addition to that, has chosen to also take an elective. So in doing that, that student would have seven classes, 
Most of our freshmen have six classes. That student would have seven classes and would start at what we call zero period, which starts at seven in the morning. And so that's something that you can be thinking about. You can be in, in touch with your eighth grade counselor if you're recommended for Honors World History and you decide you want to take an elective in addition to that. Remember, that's a big commitment, getting up and getting here at seven in the morning every day. Not, not something that we recommend for everybody, um, but that's, that's definitely a conversation we would encourage you to have with your eighth grade counselor. So this shows the typical daily bell schedule, which kind of lets you guys know where you'd be going when. Um, the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, everything was kind of cut off on the side. However, what it's basically showing is that that zero period that Ms. Hart was just talking about would start at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, it ends at about 7.53. So typically our passing periods um, are approximately 10 minutes long, which is plenty of time to get from one far end of the campus all the way to the other far end of the campus with enough time to even stop and talk to your friends just a little bit. <laughs> Uh, so you can see that in a typical daily schedule, if you were to start at first period at 8 o'clock in the morning, you'd actually go to your first two classes before, uh, you can't see it on there, but you go to first period and second period, which would then be from uh, uh, 9.03 to 9.56. And then we have a short nutrition time. Now the nutrition time is only five minutes long, but that's coupled with the 10 minute passing period. So it actually gives you a 15 minute passing period to grab a snack, uh, to go to your lockers and to make it over to your third period class. Next we have our biggest chunk of the day, which is going to be periods three, four, and five in succession, uh, each approximately 55 minutes long. After fifth period is when we would have lunchtime, which is actually at 110. And lunchtime is from 110 to 150, and that's coupled again with the 10 minute passing period for sixth period to then begin at uh, two o'clock. Uh, all of our students get out of school at 2.56 in the afternoon. That's the end of the school day. However, we do have some after school classes um, such, a, such as robotics, um, entrepreneurship. So we do have some specialized classes that are offered after school, as well as many of the sports programs practice after school as well. Uh, but a typical uh, day schedule would end at 2.56 in the afternoon. Okay, uh, this is a message from our Associated Student Body. Um, do we have any ASB kid in here right now? Come on in, Jared. I didn't see you over there. Jared's going to talk just a little bit about getting involved. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Jared Kurtz. I'm a senior here at Beverly, and I've been going here for four years. Um, so I'm here to talk about getting involved in the school, which is just more than just like your classes. And the extracurriculars and clubs that you join are really what make Beverly special and what make your high school experience unique. It's like, once you graduate from here, you're not going to remember oh, what you learned in your English class, but you're really going to remember <laughs> what you did like outside of class and what clubs you did and how that made you enjoy wanting to come to school. So we offer so many different clubs and uh, electives. So even if you don't find a club or elective you want, it's so easy to start a club with your friends and get a sponsor and do stuff like that. And ASB will support you and offer you funds and stuff like that for your club. And so there's a really good way to get really much anything you want. Like, I've been involved in so many things from DECA to ceramics, ASB, and it's a really great way to not only just enjoy high school, but to meet so many new people that are not only in your grade level. Like, some biggest advice I could, like, give you guys is to not just to get involved, but, like, make friends with kids that are not just in your grade so that you can just know a lot of people and making that connection will help you, like, have more fun in Beverly. And so just get involved, even if you don't like it, just try it for like one or two days. And if you don't like it, you can obviously quit or switch out. Just try to do as much as you can and see, find your passions. And then from there, everything will go your way. Thank you. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. We also love to hear from, um, can you go back one? from one of our CTE All-Stars. Hi, my name is Eva. Um, I'm in both k and Robotics. I started both of them in ninth grade, mostly because my older brother, um, he came to the school, he's two years older than me, so he started both of them in 10th grade. I got a little head start. Um, so I'll start off with k -Bev. k -Bev is um, our film program here at the high school. Um, there's many different periods. Most of the periods, um, the students get the opportunity to make their own shows and film it in our amazing studio. Um, you guys should definitely check that out. It's upstairs next to the library. Um, we're filming an open house show t today. Um, it's our highlight of the year usually. It's a live two hour show. And we have journalists all throughout the high school who are interviewing students, parents, teachers, and really highlighting the high school tonight. Um, so came up and in fifth period, it's the advanced period. 
and that's where we filmed the Norman update. I mean, the, sorry, the Norman News and the Norman update. The Norman News is the, it's been running for 40 years. It's the longest running news program for high schoolers in the country. And the Norman update, we just started this last year, I believe, and it's about two minutes, and we collaborate with ASB, and we have people um, anchor a little brief newscast that goes out to all the teachers on Monday mornings, and they play for their students, and it gives them a little bit of a um, intro into the week. Um, and then switching to robotics, robotics is very fun. I'm on the business division, so we do a lot of the marketing and the sponsorships and stuff like that for the team. And then there's also the builders, who obviously they build the amazing robot, and the programmers who program it. So um, I think you can also visit the wood shop that's on the first floor of the main building. So so one of the themes of both of the two students that we just had right now is get involved. Um, I can't emphasize that enough, and that's really some of the, one of the things, if not the thing, that makes this place really special. I take that back. It's also academics. Uh, it's, it's the two of those things together. For example, um, it doesn't matter what classes that you're taking here. They could be advanced classes, they could be honors classes, they could be regular classes. Every single class that you take this year will be UC approved. It will be a college prep class. It doesn't matter what you take. We're going to get you ready for college. And it's one of the things that we're really, really proud of at this school is that every student, every parent who comes back and talks to us always says the same thing. My kid was ready for college. Um, and that is universally true. I've been here 13 years. I've never had someone come to me like, Mr. Mead, my kid wasn't ready for college. And you are going to remember what you learned in English. Um, I mean, <laughs> um, because it'll help get you through college. You'll know how to write, you'll know how to read, you'll know how to annotate, and that's just English. Um, so get involved. Tons of stuff. You can dream it. You can do it here. And that sounds grandiose, but it's true. Um, one of the things that I'm going to talk to you about right now um, is athletics. Uh, right now our athletic director is in a different room. He, he wasn't able to make it to this one. But um, I was a coach here for eight or nine years before I transitioned into administration. Um, our athletic programs are really great. Um, you know, we don't have the biggest population compared to the schools that we play, but we compete and we beat them anyway. Um, and if you don't believe me, uh, last night our wrestling team just won league. Our girls soccer team is this close, fingers crossed. Um, our boys basketball team is playing for league championship right now. Our uh, boys soccer team is strong. Our girls soccer team is obviously very strong. I mean, this is all just winter. Forget about fall and spring. So our, our athletics are great. We've got great coaches. We've got a great culture down there. If you're an athlete, you're going to be happy here. Um, there's some sports you need to try out for and some sports that you don't. Most sports you do need to try out for. Um, so one of the things I want to emphasize is, do you have any hopeful athletes in this room? Outstanding. You're going to need to keep an eye on your emails. There will be a tryout period. You really need to make sure you get to that. It will be before August the first week of August, or probably late July, something like that. We are working with CIF to find out exactly when we can do it. You really need to make it to that tryout. I know you have vacations and everything else. You're going to need to communicate with the athletic director and the coach in case you can't make it. But you really want to make that tryout. Here's why. If you go to that tryout and you make the team, we will give you the right schedule when you arrive at school on the first day. That's what we want. If you don't try out and you decide later on or some point and you're lucky enough or you're able to get onto the team, then we have to mix up your schedule and things get a little trickier. It's really in your best interest to be at that tryout. Now there's another thing that I would suggest that you can do is join our summer program. There will be information coming on out about that. Many of our programs have an on-campus coach who currently works with the teams, whether it's boys basketball or the football team who had a great season this year. Um, you know, whatever it is, if you want to play a fall or winter sport, in spring too, if you can join that summer program, it's a really good thing to do. You get to know the coach. It's not like this kind of feeling that you're going to make the team or not. It's like skills-based. It's a really good experience to get to know the coach, get to know the culture of the team, and, you know, maybe decide if you want to be on the team or not. Hopefully you do. So keep an eye on that. We do not have explicit dates for you yet, but we will get them to you as soon as we can. So keep an eye out on that if you're an athlete. It's really in everyone's best interest to see you at that tryout. Um, but it's a lot of fun. We love our athletic programs here. So lots to do. Um, there's also performing arts. Our performing arts department is second to none. You will have an opportunity to check out the Psalter to go in there. Uh, if you look at your agenda, they will be having uh, an opportunity for you to hear from them.
So if you're interested in performing arcs, maybe just go across the way here, up those stairs to the Psalter. You're literally right there. Go in, introduce yourself, say hi, and maybe stick around for that part of the evening. Um, again, there's choir, um, there is performing arts theater, and there is band and orchestra. So it's all things really need to get involved in something. And all the data says that if you get involved, your grades go up, you stay in school, you succeed. Now, staying in school, we're pretty good at that. That's something our school is, you know, pretty crackerjack about. But the fact of the matter is, if you're in school and you're involved in something, you're going to do better. That's how it goes. Um, so we want you guys to be involved. Oh, look, the HEF and PTSA, some of our favorite organizations in the world. Uh, Ms. Raymer, uh, please come on up and tell us a little bit about both, right? Yeah. Awesome. I'm wearing both hats tonight. All right. <laughs> Um, so everything you've heard thus far, that Janine remember my son is a freshman here, but um, everything you've heard thus far as far as robotics, KBEB, the amazing programs, athletics, performing arts circle, so all of that you heard is supported and paid for by your generous donations to the PTSA and also to PHEF. PTSA helps support the programs, the supplies, the technology, the computer lab, Norman Aid. So much more that this school has to offer, and that comes from your PTSA fund, which is what our goal is $500 per student. Um, but of course, any amount that you can give, we would love. Um, and then to supplement that, you have VHEF, which helps pay for, say, the computer lab and the one-to-one -one device that's going out is the Tectosis and the training that goes into getting those laptops distributed to all of those kids. So they work hand-in-hand. -hand. PTSA pays for things, if you will, and VHEF helps support with the um, the teachers and people. So please consider both of them. Um, join uh, PTSA when you come and also consider BHE. Uh, thank you. Oh, and so we're good. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, one other thing um, through BHEF, a lot of freshmen um, were involved in this last year is that we have a summer program which will start June 3rd. So there are get ahead classes. For your freshmen, if they would like to, you can take health this summer. It's a three-week course. You can take an intro to poli sci. You can take, um, we have art or photography. And all of these are kind of get-ahead classes if they want to take more electives during the year. So summer school will start again June 3rd. The three-week program um, goes to June 18th. You do the five-week program based off of the class you're taking. That'll end July 3rd, so you have the rest of your summer. And um, we will have a table up in the, um, the patio area for both BHEF and PTSA if you guys have um, more questions. Thank you again. Okay, okay. Um, so save the dates. As you, become, uh, you know, finish your eighth grade year and you get ready for high school, uh, there's a couple of dates that we want you to remember. The first one's ninth grade orientation. It should be on a Wednesday, August 7th. It's a really big day. Um, a lot of good stuff happens. You're going to get your schedule. You're going to get your books, but that's not the fun part. Actually, it should start with a whole lot of fun. We've got four different middle schools, essentially, coming into the high school on the same day. Now, you guys live in the same community. I'm sure you have rubbed shoulders with some of them through sports or activities. But you're going to meet a lot of new people that day. What we do is we have an orientation for students. It's a whole lot of fun. We, uh, we play some games. We feed you. Uh, most importantly, probably, is we hook you up with an 11th and a 12th grader in small groups. So we take eight kids, many of whom you may not know, put them in a group with two upperclassmen, and they, you know, they talk to you, they tell you what high school is like, they give you a tour, it's called Link Crew, it's a really, really great opportunity. You get your books, you get your questions answered by students, um, and it's a lot of fun, and we feed you, usually pizza. So um, you definitely want to come on that day. It's important first day. It gets you connected to the school. It tells you like some of our, our big goals um, for, for you while you're here. Goals like go big. And you know we've already kind of talked about that. Find a, you know, go big. Find something that you're into and go all in. Um, total support, which is something we all believe in. Um, students supporting students, parents supporting students. Um, obviously, teachers and administrators supporting students. So total support. Um, and, uh, you know, these are some of the things that we talk about on that first day. Uh, but really, we want you to get connected, get connected right away. So please, I know you have summer calendars and schedules. That's a huge day. Please count on being there. You do not want to miss that. Um, first day of school would be the next Monday. So Wednesday, you're here. Thursday and Friday, staff comes in. We get ready. Monday, it's go time. And uh, it's wild. I mean, you're going to hit the ground running, we promise, in a good way. Um, so tonight. A couple of quick things. Can you show me the next slide real quick so I know what's coming up? Oh, yeah, go back. Perfect. A uh, couple quick things that I want to emphasize about tonight. Number one, um, 
there's no doubt that you have questions. We are all here to try to answer as many as we can in a two hour period. Um, it's obviously going to be a challenge. Um, you may have questions about your classes for next year. Let me give you some advice tonight to try to maximize your time. If you have questions about should I be in honors history or regular history, right? This is a question that largely goes to your K-8 counselor and your current K-8 history teacher. They are the ones who are making that decision for you. It is not these counselors tonight. They don't know you. It would be completely inappropriate for them to try to make a judgment like that tonight here. It would be impossible. So if you're concerned, what what placement should I have? That is one that needs to go back to your school. So anything about academics, should I be in this class or this class? We're not going to be able to answer that tonight. We do want to try to answer your questions about electives, though. So we encourage you to talk to students, talk to teachers about the class. Um, what are the commitments? For example, if I'm thinking about being in uh, choir, right? Most of you would be in an introductory level. So the expectations wouldn't be the same as our advanced levels. But there are still expectations. How many nights am I going to miss? Are there performances? We can't answer those questions, but that teacher can. So we encourage you to go find those teachers. And that's what the map is for. That's what scavenger hunt is for. Um, if your question is about what is this class like, or how many hours, or what books do we have to read, those are also questions you can have answered tonight. Like maybe you're not sure, do I want to be in honors? And your teacher said, yeah, you, you know, we would place you there if you want to be in there. But you're like, gosh, do I want to do it? There's an opportunity you'll see on your agenda to hear from the English department about what honors English is like. Um, you can ask teachers about that. And they are available largely in the cafeteria. Every single um, department will have two people in the cafeteria to kind of answer your questions. If you have more questions, they will be able to direct you to places where other teachers are who can answer your questions. So we want you to get information about classes and what it's like to be a student here. That's what it's about. Individual questions like, what about my kid? Where uh, We can't answer that tonight. We're going to have to redirect you to your K-8 counselors. Um, if, though, tonight you discover that there's an elective that you did not sign up for that you're really passionate about, please get one of these, fill it in, and go find your counselor in the college center tonight. And you'll be able to turn this into your college counselor, or to your high school counselor, so that he or she can help schedule it. Correct? So, you will be able to talk to them tonight. But I want you to understand that they will be available from 6 to 8 tonight, your counselors. They will be available in the college center. They would love to meet you. That's why they're here. They want to meet you. Certainly they want to collect these if you have any changes. I just want you to understand that there's no way they're going to be able to give individual academic advice tonight. It just it won't be possible. So if your goal is to come meet them, please do that. Um, please introduce yourself. If you change your elective, I want to encourage you to do that. If you're worried about the placement of your child or what class in academics, you're going to need to talk to your K-8 counselor after tonight's visit. If you have questions about specific classes, what is it like to be in it, please go find those teachers and ask them. So that's a really important thing. At 8 o'clock, um, they got to go home. They've got families. They've been here all day. So at 8 o'clock, we're, we're, we're going to have to shut it down. We love you to death. We're going to try to get every one of your questions answered. But between 6 and 8 tonight, that will be your time to explore. If you want to change your elective, the sheet looks like this, you can do that tonight. Again, if it's about academics, we will not be able to help you. Um, if you could go. Okay, so you have this high school map. It's going to be a challenge. Do I have an ASP person? I think she just left. I'm hopeful that you will see balloon-laden people out there. Um, if you have questions, ask around. I'll be around. Um, they will be in the college center. You will be able to find your way. Part of the fun is not exactly knowing where you're going. If you see an older kid, go ahead and ask. Um, we're here for you, um, and we're here to answer as many questions as we can over the course of the night. We're done a couple minutes early, so please welcome to the high school and have a great evening. We do have a lot of people.